What is up, everyone? It has finally happened. After much buildup, after many fucking years of fan speculation, after 139 chapters, after many spoilers for anime-only people, at long last we have arrived. At the end of Shingeki no Kyojin, Attack on Titan, Hajime Isayama's story has ended. And boy, oh boy, it sure does seem like the fan base is collectively shitting themselves. <laughs> and honestly, it's like, here's my thing. I've seen like maybe a couple, like one, two, three people, like saying, oh, I actually like that ending. A bunch of people saying they have mixed feelings and a giant tidal wave of people saying, I hate this ending. What the fuck is Yama? This was terrible. This is hack writing. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. So, yeah, people are saying shit like the fan theories were better than this fucking ending. Like, you know, and, and here's my honest-to-God thoughts on this ending for Attack on Titan. It's, honestly speaking, not as bad as it could have been, man. It could have been worse. Uh, I do have some problems with it, but uh, honestly speaking, I feel like, here's, like, I didn't start reading this from 2008. I didn't start watching the anime as soon as it came out. I was reluctant at first. I, I didn't really watch the anime until 2017. I didn't really read the manga till very recently. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm super invested in this fan base. Like I know some people are. Some people are very, very... Like this has been a big chunk of their life. This has been like 10 years of their life being a fan of this thing basically. So I understand like people have so much hopes and expectations. It's almost like... It reminds me of... The Attack on Titan fan base honestly reminds me of like growing up reading the Harry Potter books and like how much hype there was around the Harry Potter books as they came out and the movie fan base as well. And I kind of see some of those similarities in, uh, in Attack on Titan. You know, people react super hard to spoilers. Snape kills Dumbledore, LOL. Like, me, I'm one of those people who I genuinely just like, bro, I don't give a fuck if you spoil it for me. I'll still read the chapter and just judge the chapter for, or watch the episode and, and judge it for what it is. And rather than being, oh my god, you spoiled it. Now I can't enjoy anything because... If I know what happens next, it just destroys the fucking story. It's not like you can watch things multiple times if it's actually fucking good. But anyways, before I go off on a rant about spoilers, anyways, let's talk about this chapter. So, <laughs> so I think the one, uh, okay, like, let's just, let's just do a post-mortem here. I think the one panel that completely broke everyone, and I think it's so brilliant, what is it? Like, Isayama's giving us a lot of interesting messages in this, in this manga. When we, when we get to the end here, there's many interesting me messages here, and I think a lot of people will disagree with it on a gut level, but I, I commend Isayama, even if I disagree with some things he has done here as a storyteller, I commend him for, for having the boldness to say some very, you know, things people might find tough to swallow. He's saying, implying things like, love is pain. Love is slavery. Freedom, or the quest for freedom, is a slit form of slavery or a form of self-confinement in and of itself. The quest for freedom can be a form of self-imprisonment. And, you know, he's kind of showing a much more, you know, the fan base is just, like, going for, like, you got the fucking Aaron and Mikasa people, the fucking Aaron and Historia people, these fucking shipping wars... Please kill yourself if you're part of these shipping wars, please. The world will be a better place. You have this fucking... All these fucking people... Who, who basically wanted, you know, real-life Jaegerists, like... Kill everyone. Kill everyone. Hail Aaron. Fuck, man. Like, it's just... Just basically, literally wanting Aaron to be a Titan Hitler and just fucking kill everyone. Like... <laughs> So I, I, I think the post-mortem, the, the panel that fucking killed everyone is when Armin punches Aaron to the ground and we see Aaron like sitting back like a little fucking bitch looking up at Armin and he's like, Mikasa with another man? I never want that. I don't want her to move on. I don't want her to move forward. He's saying like, saying like, of course I wanted to be with her and I didn't want to die. Like, of course, he wants to be with her and, and be with Armin and shit, like, 
and, and the part that's sad is when he said that the gets fucks people up is when he says i hope mikasa doesn't get with anyone for 10 years after i die and even armin is basically the self-insert for the audience at this point he's like just stop man like this is fucking pitiful dude just stop like and and like the, i just i bro i'm watching reactions of people read this manga and it's like the moment they get to this panel like their entire face just like like everything you thought about Aaron Yeager, the ultra super titan Chad, Aaron Yeager, the fucking dark haired, green eyed, fucking sick, eight, ten pack abs, fucking super Chad, the guy who gets all the girls simping, the ultra fucking alpha male, Aaron Yeager, the genocidal Chad, Hitler's finest son, the, the finest of all Eldians, like this. <laughs> Like, people just, like, everybody just has all these hopes and dreams and expectations and, like, Aaron is going to be the greatest of all fucking time anime and manga protagonists and Aaron we trust, like, in all this. And, and to see Aaron basically like a fucking incel on the ground groveling has just, like, destroyed people. And this is the fucking thing, guys. This is the fucking thing, right? If you're the type of person who's actually unironically, like, going to commit the fucking act of murdering tens, hundreds of millions of fucking people, like, unironically gonna kill more people than fucking Hitler and Stalin and Pol Pot and all these fucking dictators. Not just over time, through, like, a communist regime or something. No, just, like, one fucking day just stomping the fuck out of people. Like, bro, if you are the type of person who unironically is going to fucking do this sort of thing, you probably are a fucking edgelord. You probably are a fucking incel. You probably are a fucking, like, like the type of person who's in real life would commit a fucking mass shooting or something. L like these fucking virgin fucking incel killers. Like, Aaron fucking Jaeger. Here lies Aaron Jaeger. He never scored Mikasa's Asian pussy. It never happened, man. I had to do the rumbling arm in. I just wanted Mikasa's Asian pussy so bad. I didn't have a choice. If it was up to me, I wouldn't have done this shit. I'd be smashing that Asian puss all day. Armin's just looking at him like... You fucking simpy, wimpy motherfucker. <laughs> oh my god, man. Like... People are calling it the character assassination of Aaron Yeager. Listen, guys. Like, yes, Aaron literally dies an involuntarily celibate virgin, but... Guys, can we just appreciate, like, people are saying, oh, they ruined him, like, he's just a fucking wimp now, we, Aaron slept for 16 chapters and did nothing, he's a fucking retard, like, all this shit. Okay, guys, can we appreciate how much shit Aaron did? Like, like, incredibly fucked up shit that Aaron did? Aaron sacrificed his own mother. He made his dad's ex-wife kill his fucking mother. He, like, he, in the past, turned himself into the edgelord protagonist. It's like a fucking closed loop. It's like fucking Tenet or some shit. He fucking turned himself into the fucking edgelord protagonist by becoming the edgelord protagonist? What? Like, which came first? The, the dead mother being eaten by uh, Dina Fritz or Aaron being an edgelord? It's like a fucking paradox. He fucking... He, Aaron Kruger. He made Aaron Kruger give the power to his father. He made his father slay younglings. He made his father give his own life to fucking Aaron. He sacrificed his whole fucking family. He sacrificed everyone. The only person he didn't sacrifice was Mikasa, who he had to sacrifice his love for. He sacrificed Grisha, his mother. He sacrificed Zeke. He sacrificed Zeke's mother. Or maybe Dina Fritz comes back to life. It would be great to see a little snapshot of Dina Fritz confused and shit. <laughs> Why does my stomach feel like it has my ex-husband's new wife in it? Oh my goodness, man. Like, Aaron fucking... Okay, so let's see what Aaron did. Aaron literally slayed younglings. He literally crushed children to death. While the founding titan apparently made it so that... He was crying in front of the child's eyes from his perspective at the same time while crushing the child to death and killing hundreds of millions of people. Apparently he's killed 80% of the human population 
So I don't know how many people are, are alive in the world of Attack on Titan. I don't know how many billions of people are on Earth. This guy killed over a fucking billion fucking people. A, a couple fucking well billion. If there was five billion people on the Earth, Aaron killed four billion of them. And you're going to call him a do-nothing wimp protagonist? I don't know, man. I, I guess you guys are looking at fucking Hitler and fucking Stalin's kill counts like only millions of deaths? You guys didn't do shit, man. Aaron's the real MVP. Like, I don't... <laughs> like, bro. What else did... Like, Aaron fucking... Aaron not... Aaron let his fucking best friend become the fucking hero. The Lulu Shedding. He let the girl he loved... Yeah, there's kind of a message about simping here. So, uh, basically, founder Amir is a simp for King Fritz for over 2,000 years. My biggest problem with this whole thing, my biggest fucking problem, okay, two problems I have with this. Problem number one, what the fuck was the hallucinogenia? What the fuck was the point of the hallucinogenia? Where, why introduce this fucking thing into the story at all? I, like, I'm starting to wonder if this was rushed, if this is like MGS5, The Phantom Pain, where it's just rushed and there's like literally a missing part of the story. Like, the, should the, chap, the chapters either should have been longer, maybe there should have been another chapter or something, because I'm wondering what the fuck was going on with hallucinogenia where does that lead to did it just die off screen that's fucking lame historia's baby like what the fuck like there was no point to that like and and then the third thing is um these time loops basically the previous chapter 138 if you look at chapter one it's basically implying that aaron's consciousness kind of looped back where it was like like, like, basically, he would make the choice to live with Mikasa for the end of his three years, then die from the Titan curse, and then as Mikasa looks at him and says, see you later, Aaron, his eyes close, and it loops back to chapter one. You can look at chapter one, and, and Aaron even comments that, like, now Mikasa has long hair while he was remembering adult Mikasa with short hair. So, I don't understand this. Why put in this time loop thing and the hallucinogenia if it's not going to go anywhere? You know what I mean? That to me, that's that's again, that's the that's my main problem with this. But the actual resolution, I'm okay with. It's kind of showing there's no real black white solution. So I'm still not understanding how. I guess be, I guess basically when Mikasa beheads fucking. So basically, Mikasa is like the allegor the, the the future version of Emir, where. Mikasa spends her whole life simping for one guy. <laughs> just like Ymir spent her whole life spent simping for one guy, King Fritz. So Mikasa just cannot stop simping for Eren. And basically the choice she has to make is to stop simping, behead Eren, and become a necrophiliac. But then Ymir uh, basically is just standing behind her like, You go girl, stop simping, stop simping, stop simping, behead that fucking Chad. Like, you're never going to get that dick. Behead him. Like, you sh that's what I should have done. Instead, I let him impregnate me three times and then told my kids to eat me. And I still loved him because I was that much of a simp. So basically, well, thank you, Hajime Isayama. Simping is bad, kids. Don't do it. So anyways, fucking... So, so I like that. I like that that's actually a thing that has to happen. Mikasa's forced to stop simping. I still don't fully understand how that makes... I guess Emir just decides... I don't know if Emir and the Hallucigenia are linked now. I was thinking the Hallucigenia was like an exterior factor. So I don't fucking understand that shit. But... Yeah, so Hallucigenia... Is just gone. Uh, Emir, the, the Titan powers go away. Everybody Shinzo, Sasageo one last time. And then, you know... And then we go to the fast forward. Farmer Chad is chilling with Queen Historia and his baby fucking, uh, and you know, everybody's basically had the, the, the growth, everybody be time skipped. Armin Arlert is the hero who killed the attack Titan Aaron Jaeger. And Mikasa is still, still trying to just get over the simp grief, still sitting by that tree where she was with Aaron in chapter one. And... So apparently Aaron becomes a fucking dove. So you see that, kids? If you die a pure virgin like Aaron Yeager, if you never get any fucking vag, you will reincarnate as a dove too. So really, we should all... Like, if you've lost your virginity, you... 
You gave up the fucking key to immortality right there. I'm just going to decompose like everybody else now. So I don't know, man. I personally think it was a good resolution. Basically, Isayama is saying, like, look, we can all sit here and go genocide, yay, and let's just kill everyone, yay. The world is shit, just fucking kill everyone, yay. Like, we, we can all do that. Or maybe what, what Isayama is trying to imply is that Hitler is the greatest person who ever lived. Because, <laughs> you know, Hitler just was like, let's just kill all these Jews. And the next thing you know, everybody's like, Hitler, you can't do that. So the whole world is like, okay, you know what? Yeah, you know, we've all we've all had our thing with the Jews. We all kick the Jews around and shit. But you know what? This shit's just not right. Let's all team up. Let's all get get the gang together. Let's all join forces and stop Hitler. And and so Hitler basically caused world peace by making the whole world unite against him. Is that what Isayama's saying, basically? I mean, obviously, it's not quite like that. It, it's not quite that cut and dry. There's still, like, you know wariness and shit like that but eventually it's like a path to peace can be forged it looks like eldia is on the path to peace eventually but you know sacrifices had to be made i think the implication is that if aaron went with mikasa he would not have been able uh to save eldia so it's kind of like an implication about what the founding titan really is and i think that's something a lot of people are having a hard time wrapping their brain around like how the founding titan really works of like the the concept of becoming omnipresent in time and how that would influence someone's decision making and stuff so let's get this straight aaron sacrificed his entire family he ate his mom he killed his dad he made his dad kill younglings before he killed his dad he killed his brother he killed his brother's mom he sacrificed his fucking true love he fucking killed billions of people he never took freedom away from the Eldians. He never stopped the Eldians. He let the Eldians become the heroes. He led Eldia towards a path of freedom. And he reincarnated. And, but despite all of this, you know, he's the fucking, he went from being the greatest anime protagonist of all time to the worst pro anime protagonist, anime's manga protagonist of all time because he just didn't kill enough people. All right, bros, whatever. I don't know, man. I'm almost 30 now and seeing these fan bases of fucking people, you just... I don't know, man. These fan bases are just fucking retarded. Anyways, I'm Mike Muhammad. Those are my thoughts on Chapter 139 of Attack on Titan. I thought the whole series was great. Looking forward to the anime. Uh, again, I would really like to know what the fuck was going on with Lucigenia. I would really like to know more about that fucking time loop from 138. Otherwise, man, I liked it. 9 out of 10. Isayama, cool story, bro. Peace out, guys.